And so this week, essentially, the goal is to cover all the steps going from this here. And what we'll be doing is that we'll be preparing this so that it can be imported inside of uh, Marvelous Designer. So the steps, as far as ZBrush is concerned, really, is uh, first we will be breaking this down into a bunch of different uh, polygroups. And then we'll be able to do a remeshing of this. Uh, we'll essentially just be using Z remesher inside of ZBrush. Really nothing all that complicated about it. After we're done with the ZBrush stage, what we'll do is that we'll import it inside of Maya. Uh, now, we could use other 3D packages. It doesn't necessarily absolutely have to be Maya. But what we have to do in here is that we have to tweak the UVs. Because uh, the UVs, you'll see, are highly important. They're highly critical to having a proper Marvelous Designer pattern that is reconstructed after the fact. After that's done, then we'll be importing this inside of uh, Marvelous Designer. And our import will look something like this here. I'm going to use a brush uh, that I have prepared in this case that I've called Pen Sharp. All it does is it really just does these very, very sharp sort of marker lines, essentially, these completely black lines. So uh, the way that polygroup it works is that it works something like this. Uh, you start with, with a series of black lines on your model. And as you guys can see, so right now I don't have any polygroups. Uh, my whole mesh has one polygroup that is applied to it. And I've just gone in here and I've just uh, drawn out this kind of square on my surface. And now I'm going to go here into Z plugin and I'm going to go into the polygroup it uh, plugin. And in here, I'm just going to click on this little button right here, polygroup it from paint borderless. And take a look at that. It's just gonna take just a second. And this is the result. ZBrush separates out in different polygroups, all the zones that were closed off uh, using the paintbrush. Um, now, it is important to use this pen sharp brush, or at the very least, use something that is fully opaque. You can obviously make this kind of brush on your side as well. And uh, yeah, so, so what we want to be doing is just using this brush and just be going all the way around. So we want to be painting directly over the seams. Uh, we want to be painting just directly over the seams and really just following every seam that we have on our garment using this brush here. Uh, so I'm obviously not going to do this whole thing, but I will do just a few panels. The only thing I need now is this middle line separated. So here's my line, it's pretty good. All right, I think that's pretty good for uh, these few panels. Uh, let's do our polygroup and let's see what happens. So Z plugin, polygroup from paint borderless. All right, so yeah, as you guys can see, here's my polygroup separation. Uh, so next what we have is that we need to remesh this. Um, since we can't quite import and unwrap this, I mean, technically we can, we could simply unwrap this and throw it inside of uh, Marvel's Designer. It does technically work. Uh, but it won't necessarily be the most optimal way of working. So we really want to be uh, doing a quick remesh of this so that we have just a bit of cleaner geometry to play with. So in this case, what I like to use is uh, ZBrush's Z remesher function. Uh, in my Z remesher menu, you guys can see that there's a few options I've already tweaked. So target polygon count, uh, default five, I've put it to 20. Um, the idea is that we're not trying to make a low resolution mesh. We're just trying to have a clean topology. And certainly when we have things like these tiny little strips of polygons like this here, uh, this is just one polygroup that goes all the way around the leg, as you guys can see. Uh, if I have a polygon count for my zero measure that is too low, these are just not going to uh, come out right. So uh, I'd rather go too high than too low in this particular case. Uh, I've also turned on the keep groups function right here, as you guys can see. It's very important because uh, if you don't have that on, you'll zero mesh and you'll lose all your groups. So let's go ahead. Let's uh, zero mesh this. Uh, this should be this should be pretty quick to finish. And here we go. 
All right, that's not, it's not too bad. Uh, it's not too bad. There are issues, there are things that we can't address. Um, the first thing I'll say actually is that uh, I never do only one Z remeshing pass. I almost always do two. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, I find that the second Z remesh just gives you something that's just so, so, so much cleaner than the first one. Now, it could be that I'm not tweaking my Z remesh values properly the first time around. I don't know, maybe that's the case. But I do find essentially that Z remeshing a second time really gives you a much, much cleaner geometry. And it's very consistent to you. Like, it's a very, very consistent trick, you know? So, I mean, this little tiny little polygroup here, uh, that's going to create problems. But I'll just disregard that for now. I just want to show you guys what happens when we Z remesh again a second time. And what I'm going to do here, even, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, uh, um, sometimes I like to set here the, uh, just under the target polygon count, I like to, to say that I want to have only half the um, resolution of what I had before. You know, I try to keep it a bit higher than what I want for the first zero mesh, and then I bring it down. And then let's zero mesh again and see the kind of result that we get. All right, here we go. Yeah, that looks a lot cleaner. Uh, it's still... Looks pretty good, you know, like, let's take a look at this here. You know, we went from this here, which is a little bit messy to this here, which is now looks really, really clean to me. Uh, there's a few little vertice issue here, but I think we don't have to worry about these too much. So as far as unwrapping is concerned, so um, as I said, I like to use a full 3D, but I will start the unwrap in ZBrush. And a real easy way that we can do this here is just by going to Z script, or rather going to Z plugin, and then going to UV master, and just uh, turning on here little polygroups button right here, turning off symmetry. In this case, it doesn't really matter. And I'll just do an unwrap. And what it's going to do, it's going to unwrap out our panels uh, each individually. I'm pretty much ready to export. Uh, I'll be exporting this out. You can export it either as FPX or as OBJ. Uh, if you export it out as OBJ, simply go into your export menu first and disable the little group button right here. Because if you don't, uh, it's likely going to import into Maya being a little jumbled and uh, separated in ways that, that look a bit awkward. Now, there are cases where you want to preserve the group options, of course, but uh, for this particular case, it's better to do that. Uh, and I'm going to export the OBJ essentially, just um, somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Okay, so inside of Maya, so let's go ahead, let's import. Let's import our garment. We turned off the groups option upon export when we exported out of ZBrush. So now all we have is one lone mesh uh, that is floating out here. For Unfold 3D then, uh, to turn it on, we have to go to Windows here. We have to go to Setting Preferences. And then we have to go to Plugin Manager. And in there, what you want is simply to scroll down until you find Unfold 3D in here. And make sure that it's set to Loaded and set to Auto Load. Uh, and that's it. You don't have to restart Maya after the fact. Uh, all you have to do is go into your UV editor window and you will be able to see your UVs. But here we can see that all the panels that we had, all the polygroups that we had inside of ZBrush are now separated as uh, UV shells. Uh, so that's a great starting point. Um, but don't blindly throw this inside of Marvel's Designer. We need to clean up the UVs and make sure that they are really, really, really solid. So I take this here. Uh, as much as just reselecting one of our UV shells or all of our UV shells. And then uh, in here, simply doing a shift right click, going to unfold, going to our unfold menu right here. And what it's going to do, it's going to open this other box uh, where you have options to tweak your unfold values, if you will. Um, and it may be on legacy by as a default method, so you really just want to make sure that you are setting it to Unfold 3D. Now that Unfold 3D is selected as the unwrapping method, uh, I can just close this. I don't need to necessarily apply it now. And what's going to happen now is that the moment that I select a shell, but what I usually want to do is, is be selecting all the shells that I have. That's usually how I start this. So I select the whole shells, shift, right-click, unfold, and just do an unfold over the whole thing. Or if you're good with uh, marking uh, menus, you can just do it in just like that. 
as you guys can see, my UV shells have shifted a little bit. They're not quite the same. That's because Unfold 3D simply recalculates the unwrapping, if you will, uh, in a different way than what ZBrush did. Um, and it just so happens that I much prefer um, Unfold 3D's unwrapping algorithm over uh, ZBrush UV Masters. I just find that this will give us a result that will work better inside of uh, Marvel's Designer. Uh, it, it, it's not true 100% of the time, but it is true most of the time. Um, and as you guys can see, like there are a few problems. Like if I take a look at this here, right? This whole shell right here. So let's just find it here where it is. So here it is. So this, this whole shell here, as you guys can see, if I'm not careful, I'll be missing out on the fact that there's this little problem right here. For some reason, there's, there's this little cut. Uh, this always happens for some reason. I see this on a regular basis. If I just zoom in on here, you can, guys can see, can see my edge here. There's just like a bit of an opening there. For some reason, UV Master gave me that kind of, uh, that kind of little issue there. So, unfold 3D. As we re-unfold this, uh, it will sort of close close up the vertices in a way. But we still have a seam, though. We can still see that this is seamed, if you will. You know. And uh, by the way, just uh, don't forget that you have these options right here too that you can turn on, these display options to be able to see better where your seams are. Um, yeah, so so we want to be careful with these things. We want to go in here and want to really make sure that we clean up all these little problems that we have. So in this case here, I really just have to select these, uh, just select the edges here that are problematic, shift, right click, and just do a move and sue UV edges here. Or again, if you do it quickly with the marking menus, it's going to look like this. Uh, if you guys go in here, you go into Layout, into your Layout UVs, there's a bunch of options here that you guys can tweak. Shell pre-rotation. Let's make it, let's say, align Y to V or something. And what it's going to do is going to align essentially all your stuff uh, so that it's all top to bottom. All right, so let's take this, Export, Export Selection. Uh, I'll be exporting this out as an OBJ. Okay, so here we are in Marvel's Designer. Let's import, import OBJ, and let's load our pants here. So let's go to low type, add, object type. This is not an avatar. This is a garment, so let's select that instead. Under object type, garment, where it says here, trace 2D patterns from UV map. This definitely needs to be turned on. So go ahead and turn that on, else your UVs will have been for nothing. And what it's going to do, it's going to import your garment and Marvel's Designer will recreate the 3D garment based upon the imported OBJ and will give you the exact panels uh, that you had inside of your UVs. Uh, now, as you can see, there are some sections that have not imported. Uh, it's not normal, but it's normal that we have that problem. Uh, so we'll certainly look into troubleshooting that uh, together and what happens, what can you do when you have issues like that. But as you guys can see, else uh, I pretty much have my whole pattern right here and we can let it melt on the floor if we want just to test it out. There you go, it's dead now. 